Hi, my beauties. My name is Dr. Stephanie Kappel, and I am a board-certified, fellowship-trained cosmetic dermatologist in Newport Beach, California. And today, we're going to be covering laser combination therapy. So the reason why I wanted to cover laser combination therapy is because lasers are so exciting and such amazing devices, but I feel like there's not that much information out there about them and they could be really hard to understand and there's so many and there's so many different kinds for so many different things that it could be overwhelming and confusing to people who are trying to learn more about them. So hopefully I could break it down and not make you guys afraid of combined laser treatments. And what I mean by combined is doing multiple lasers in one day. So so with some lasers, when you have downtime, you don't want to have a week of downtime and then have another laser with another week of downtime and then another week of downtime on top of that. But a lot of times, we can combine lasers specifically to customize each individual patient experience and have it all done at the same time so that you know, you're recovering for one week at a time and you're having everything done, everything covered, and each specific skin change that you're hoping to resolve will get targeted therapy for each individual skin problems, so whether that's hyperpigmentation, redness, fine lines and wrinkles. Now, of course, there's lasers that do a little bit of everything, like say, for example, a Fraxel or a Halo or a Clear and Brilliant or even like a CO2 is gonna help with fine lines, wrinkles, pore size, collagen stimulation, helping hyperpigmentation, helping with redness. But when you get specific lasers that are targeted therapy, like a V-beam or an XLV or a KTP for redness or like a Pico or a YAG or you know another type of laser that's gonna target pigmentation, like an 8 10 nanometer diode. I have to not get so scientific. I need to keep it simple, but I know you guys like it when I get scientific, so okay, I may cut that part out. When you combine each individual treatment for little stubborn areas that may require a little bit higher level of care or a little bit more targeted therapy, it knocks it out of the park. The results are next level and there's nothing really that compares to it. For example, say someone has some stubborn little brown spots, but they also have sun damage and large pores and fine lines and wrinkles and want just rejuvenation. They'll have a Fraxel. So Fraxel is going to do all those things. It's going to help the texture of the skin by stimulating collagen. It's going to help with fine lines and wrinkles. It's going to shrink pore size. It's going to make you know the pigmentation better. But if you have like specific really stubborn dark spots and you go in with a little Pico to kind of spot treat those and do a Fraxel over the entire face, or say someone has like little broken capillaries on like the nose, or they have like a little cherry angioma on their face, you do a V-beam in conjunction with a Fraxel, that just knocks it out of the park, and there's nothing else like it. So yes, we do all these lasers, same day, same treatment, within you know minutes of each other, and then you recover one week later, and not only does your skin overall look amazing, because you've had all of these benefits to the skin, but you've also had specific targeted therapy for those little stubborn things that really annoy you that may not have completely gone away should you have just gotten one laser alone. Like say a stubborn round spot wouldn't have probably gone away with a Fraxel. It would fade it and make it look better, but if you want it gone and you're neurotic with your skin and you want targeted therapy and you want results and you want everything to be perfect, which I, should, I know I should never say we can make the skin perfect, but we kind of can. So before I move on, I want to make a little quick announcement. I also want to make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel because I drop derm info every Sunday morning with new topics and debunking skin myths, whatever you guys want to hear about. Drop a comment in the comment section and let me know what you guys want to hear about because I see you, I hear you, and this is my way to engage with you and give you what you need, give you what you need. And I also wanted to say that I'm upping my YouTube game a little bit because before I literally had my iPhone in my white coat pocket in my clinic and I would throw it up without a ring light, without anything and I'm not saying I'm gonna be like a professionally edited YouTube polished channel like some of my other colleagues are but I'm gonna get a better camera I'm gonna film in landscape view I'm gonna have better lighting and then hopefully it'll be a better experience for everyone and especially now that YouTube has a better platform for creators it just makes it easier for us to use this as an educational platform to get information out to you so um, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell for notifications so that you don't miss out also there's a lot of new and exciting Things coming down the pipeline in dermatology, in injectables, Allergan's launching new products that are gonna be game changers. We're gonna um, have access to that next month. I'm a faculty member, so I get first dibs. I'm so excited to show, share that with you. And then Elicor, which is a new device that's gonna be coming out, which I'm super excited about. Um, and I'll tell you more about that later. New technologies in the skincare industry, which you know my line MDR is gonna incorporate all those new technologies for sure. We can't be behind on technology, people. We need to stay ahead of it. And you know we're trailblazers. 
users and you're coming with me. And then uh, new longer lasting neuromodulators recently launched by Revance. So there's so, so many fun things coming down the pipeline and we don't want to be months behind. We want to be ahead. So subscribe and I'll keep you in the know. Okay, now I'll get back to laser combination therapy. Sorry that I get so excited. So specific targeted laser therapy, like what does that mean? The theory of selective photothermolysis. It's good stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna break it down. Each laser has a collimated light that is coherent in one wavelength. I go like this because it's like the electromagnetic spectrum and all these wavelengths are moving through time and space in these the electromagnetic spectrum. And each wavelength is targeted to something which we call a chromophore. It's the target. It's the target that the wavelength of the laser is attracted to. So for a V-beam or an XLV or a KTP or a laser for redness, which is all those lasers that I just mentioned, 595 nanometer chromophores or 585 or 532, they're all targeting hemoglobin as the chromophore. So anything with hemoglobin in it, rosacea with redness because you're dilated blood vessels, broken capillaries, flushing of the skin, anywhere that there's red, that laser is going to be attracted to the redness and it's going to obliterate it or it's going to ablate it, not obliterate. That's a little too harsh, a little bit aggressive. So for example, pigment, 810 nanometers, uh, 1064 nanometers, a, a get the brown out laser is going to be attracted to the melanin or say for laser hair removal, it's attracted to the melanin in the hair follicle. That's why lasers for hair removal just make the hair fall out. They're also longer pulse lasers and I don't wanna to get too scientific or into the physics, but why does like a laser hair removal target the hair follicle and make the hair shaft go away, but it doesn't destroy the pigment and your overall tone of your skin, right? Lasers are so smart and so brilliant and so high tech and elegant the how could you not want a laser? I mean, there are certain things like an IPL, which is not truly a laser, it's a broadband light, and you could put a filter on it to make it act like a laser, but it can't touch the elegance of a laser. Things like microneedling, where there's an on-off switch and a cookie cutter thing, you do the same thing on everybody. That's why I love being a laser specialist, and that's why I'm fellowship trained in lasers, because I always was so intrigued by lasers, just like I was intrigued by dermatology and why I went to medical school to become a dermatologist. Lasers are very smart and specific, and when you customize, each laser treatment for a specific patient, you just knock it out of the park. So say for example, a patient comes in and she has some broken capillaries on her nose and she has some melasma patches here, but she has like large pores here. Okay, that is like a field day for me. And I'm so, I just get so much excitement out of making skin better and making people just love the skin that they're in. I get my Pico laser to target the melasma. Well, depending on the depth of it, I may use a 1927 Clear and Brilliant hand piece. Then I do a little Fraxel, you know, the 1550 nanometer handpiece for Fraxel to shrink the pores. And then we do the V-beam with a three by 10 millimeter spot size, not the 10 millimeter spot size. And people always mess that up and that's why they don't get great V-beam results. Three by 10 nanometer handpiece to get those broken capillaries on the nose. And I get messages from doctors all over the place. Hey, can I have your settings? They'll send me a picture of their patient. It just comes with knowledge and honestly, like I did a whole fellowship in lasers and I stayed on two years after my laser fellowship because I was like a kid in a candy store in this two-story laser center with hundreds of lasers at my disposal. And I mean, I learned as much as I possibly could. I stayed after hours. I was there in the middle of the night looking at these lasers, testing out the wavelengths, participating in clinical trials. So it's really exciting and I have to curb my enthusiasm. But for those of you watching this video, if you're interested in lasers, they're so targeted and specific and elegant that that's how you can get these next level results. Well, why don't you see them on every street corner? Why don't you see them in every med spa? Because they're harder to drive as the driver, meaning the laser provider. So you have to be well versed in lasers and most dermatologists are, most plastic surgeons are. But for those who aren't, you know, it can be scary. And I mean, it's not just like an on off switch cookie cutter drop down menu. You have to understand what wavelength to use, the spot size, the fluence, which is the energy, the pulse width, which is how fast the laser fires, the type, the DCD, the drug cooling device that you're going to be using, how to pre and post treat, how to combine them, what order to go in. For example, if you're going to get a V-beam and a Fraxel, you want to do the V-beam first, not the Fraxel, because the Fraxel can cause some redness of the skin. Now, when the V-beam is looking for its little chromophore, which is hemoglobin, to target the rosacea, the broken capillaries, the redness, it's going to get the redness that was left over from the Fraxel more than it's going to get the redness from the actual true problem that we're trying to treat. Hopefully this makes sense. So you have to know, you know, it just takes years of experience and I'm happy to share that with you or even any new provider who wants to learn about laser. I'm here to share the wealth of information because I spent 20 years of my life 
not only learning dermatology, but understanding lasers and devices in you know, postgraduate fellowship um, with an amazing mentor of mine and participating in these clinical trials and really understanding lasers. So any questions as you guys have, drop them in the comment section. I'll try to get to as many as I can, or if I can't get to the comments, because most of my time I'm in my actual office treating patients and treating my beauties, I'll do another video you know, addressing your questions and your concerns. But I want you guys to not be afraid of combined laser therapy, and I want you guys to understand the difference between lasers and things like Morpheus 8, microneedling, which is kind of like a jack of all trades, master of none, that may not give you these long-term results that are not only impressive clinically with respect to the outcomes and the results, but nothing can touch them. And they last forever, I mean, not forever. Say you have rosacea and you have a V-beam treatment you're gonna be clear for maybe one, two, three years. It depends on your genetic blueprint, especially if you're like Irish, English, Scottish heritage, and you have a genetic blueprint, a predisposition to make these blood vessels, you may have those, you know, that redness or that flushing come back one or two years later, and then you hit it again with the laser to kind of maintain your results and the long lasting outcomes. But the results from, say for example, a Fraxel for anti-aging benefits, for reducing the incidence of precancerous and skin cancer lesions, those results stay with you. It's not like, oh, you have some temporary swelling and acne scars and wrinkles look better after a microneedling, and then two months later, you're right back to your baseline, but your money out of your bank account and your time and your downtime that you can't really get back. So that's why I'm a big proponent of, um, of lasers and combining these laser treatments. And another misnomer or misconception is that people don't think that they can get them done at the same time, which I know that I've already talked about this point in this video, but just knowing how to layer them and what order to go in, we can absolutely do multiple lasers at once. And I have people fly in to see me all over, from all over the country and actually all over the world sometimes, and they're there for one day, we get a treatment plan, and we're gonna say, okay, we're gonna do a little bit of Fraxel here, we're gonna do a little bit of Pico here, we're gonna do a little bit of V-beam here, and you know, they just have amazing results and long-standing results. So don't be afraid of lasers. Know that combined laser therapy is something that is really unique and a really great experience for people who really want targeted therapy, better results, and long-lasting outcomes. So hopefully this makes sense, and I want to make sure I didn't forget anything. Hmm. how lasers work. And I kind of briefly touched upon that when I mentioned the theory of selective photothermolysis. So this was developed by Dr. Rox Anderson, who's a well-respected dermatologist and a giant in the field of dermatology. Like, I remember when I went for my Harvard residency interview and I met Dr. Anderson and I was like so starstruck. I couldn't even, I didn't even remember my name. I couldn't even like speak. I was literally speechless. And the funny thing is that I, when I trained in LA for residency at UCLA and I would see, you know, celebrities and influencers, I would never get starstruck. But by giants in the field of dermatology who have these brilliant minds and who've really um, made such amazing contributions to the field of dermatology and aesthetics, I get totally starstruck. So. Going back to the theory of selective photothermolysis, that just means that wavelengths of lasers target specific chromophores, as we touched upon before, whether it's melanin, whether it's water, that's usually how like a CO2 and a froxel works for um, anti-aging, water is the chromophore, and um, you know, hemoglobin or different tattoo pigments, you know, there's different lasers that we use for ornamental tattoo removal, whether you have like a red component, yellow component, um, you know, purple component, there are different irons in, tattoos, there's manganese, there's cobalt, there's uh, iron, there's graphite, there's so many different, and they all have different wavelengths, so they request different lasers to completely remove the tattoo if there's multiple colors. So that just illustrates the fact that there's different lasers that are targeted to specific chromophores, and the way that they work is it only targets that specific chromophore and it doesn't affect the surrounding skin. So that's why when you have, for example, laser tattoo removal, or say you have a Fraxel, you know, the, the surrounding skin or the surrounding skin structures or elements histologically aren't ablated and they're not affected. And so that's where the precision comes in. Also, for anti-aging and collagen stimulation, the way that ablative and non-ablative or combination ablative and non-ablative lasers work is there's dissipation of heat, and that stimulates your fibroblast to make collagen, to make elastin. It kind of wakes your skin cells up to produce more of this extracellular matrix proteins that gives skin that tight, beautiful, smooth contour and texture. 
that we used to have when we were younger. And the reason why we had it when we were younger is because our cells were upregulated to make all these proteins and to renew themselves. And over time, they kind of get sleepy and senescent. So you need to kind of like kick their butt a little bit and wake them up so that they get regenerated and start pumping out collagen and elastin and ground substance and hyaluronic acid like they used to. So there is dissipation of heat that you get um, from laser treatments too. So it works in that mechanism as well. So that's kind of a ballpark of how lasers work. Um, very targeted specific therapy, but very customizable to each individual patient, which is why it's so fulfilling and rewarding and my true passion as a laser surgeon. Okay, so that's it for today. Let me know what else you guys want me to talk about. Thank you so much. Drop a comment, like it, subscribe to my channel, share this video with anyone who may find it useful, and I love you guys.